Let's take a look at modeling and animating a net for a basketball hoop. So uh, there's some interesting things that are going on with the, the net. We've got a, a woven pattern uh, with the net and uh, and of course when the ball goes through it um, it's going to animate and there's lots of different ways we can go about doing that. But let's start by uh, working on the net and uh, again the string or the cord has this woven pattern and we're gonna have to, to work our way through that. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead and close that I'll go to full screen uh, in my back view, come over to create, spline draw, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a little curve here, something like this. Okay, And I'm going to mirror that over, so I'll go over to multiply, mirror, which is shift V is the shortcut key, in for numeric, and yep, I want it on the X, and all these settings look good to me, so we're good to go. Now I've got two curves, but I'm going to make them one. So I'm going to go Shift Z, which is Merge Polys, and now I have one curve, but I'm going to make a lot of curves. Uh, but before I do that, I need to make that woven pattern I was talking about, and the hoop is very similar to a chain link fence. And so we need to make sure that it weaves in and out. To do that, I'm going to go to Control T for drag, hold down Control and drag forward. I'm holding down Control to constrain it, and I'm going to drag it like this. So I'm going to create this little S pattern. Uh, so in the, my top view, I've got an S pattern. In my, my front and back view, I've got this little arc. And in my side view, I've got a teardrop. And those can be just visual cues that you're heading in the right direction. Okay, There's my my curve. I'm going to change from flat shade to um, I'm going to change to color wireframe just so that we kind of match in all of our viewports. Okay, And let's go ahead and make some copies of this. So I'm going to go over to multiply array and I'm going to do a rectangular array and I'll do let's say um, 12 in the X and that works for me so I hit OK and M for merge I've got multiple curves here and just like we did before shift Z to make them one okay and we're getting close here's our little spring looking shape so I've got a little wave pattern in the top view teardrop I've got the uh, the arcs here and I got my spring here uh, now all we got to do is um, start to uh, get this in a hoop shape but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and save this out and I'm just gonna call this hoop 001 and that way if I ever wanted to make a chain link fence I'm kind of uh, halfway there so I'm gonna copy and paste this into layer 2 Go over to Modify, Bend, and I'm going to bend this around 360 degrees. Okay, let's center it. And I'm going to go ahead and merge the points. Okay, and because remember, the, there's the point that was at the very beginning of that curve and the point at the very end, and now they're on top of each other. Okay, so now I've got my hoop. I'm going to copy and paste that to layer 3. Uh, again, I just like to keep steps along the way. I can always go back. I mean, I've got I got it saved, but um, it's just another way of of saving it. Okay, I'm going to test out my little uh, my little weave here by grabbing this and copy paste. I'm going to move move it down, and I need to offset it. So Y for rotate, and I'm just going to offset it 15 degrees. You can see in the top how it's offset. But let's go take a look at, yep, we've got it weaving in and out of the hoop. Now, we can decide how far down we want to pull that. Depending on how thick we're going to make our cord will depend on if we want to go right there, if we were just going to keep it this thin. I'm going to give it a little bit of breathing room, something like that. Now I need to make some copies of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Multiply, Array, and I don't need to make copies in the X, so I'm going to keep that at 1. But in the Y, I'm going to make 5 copies. Okay. And now I have some copies. But I notice that it's not really giving me what I want uh, because it's, it's not 
blending this in with this. Now I could go back and change the settings, but instead I'm just going to go copy paste and I'm going to move it up like so and copy paste, move it up. And I need to decide how many I want. I'm going to do a couple more. Copy paste, move it up. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll do one more. Copy paste and move it up. Okay, I could right here have, let's um, take a look at uh, in wireframe. Uh, I'm going to go to texture. I I've kind of got the start of a neat little uh, trash can or something. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, switch to color wireframe. And let's go ahead and taper this. But before we do that, I'm going to build a, a low res proxy object that I can use later on. So I'm going to go put that in the background. And I'm going to go over to create disk. And I'm going to make a disk the same dimensions for the most part of what I have there in for numeric. And I'm just going to do 12 sides. And let's add some, some segments. I'm going to do 10, 10 segments seems to work. I'm going to get rid of the top and the bottom. Just don't need them. And, uh, and now I have a little low res proxy version of my object. So let's go to texture wire. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste that into a new layer. And I'm going to hit S for save. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and do some kind of taper uh, so I'm going to go to Modify, Taper, and I'm just going to taper in the bottom. So I right-clicked and dragged my, my little fall off, and I'm just going to taper this in a bit. Something like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take the top points up here, and I'm just going to pull them up a little bit, and I'm going to stretch those out a little bit. Just so it looks a little bit more like um, what I was seeing in the image with the, the top row. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Copy. I'm going to go to a new object. And uh, take this. Cut and paste into a new layer. So I had it in the same layer so that when I was doing the operation I could, doing the taper operation and the move and stuff, I could just make sure that I, I was working uh, the same way. Uh, so they end up being the same shape. I'm going to come over to my low res proxy item and I'm going to fix these points later on in layout. So selection set, new, and I'm going to go fix, create, OK, and now I have my little selection set there. Hop over to layer one, and I've got this, uh, this set of curves, but I'm going to work with two-point polys. So I'm going to hit Shift-E for extrude, extrude it out, grab all these points, and delete. So now I have a lot of two-point polys. Okay. It's still a pretty light mesh because it's just a bunch of two-point polys, but I also have my low res here. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and I'm going to call this hoop002, save. And now we're ready to move over to layout. Okay, so now in layout, I'm going to go ahead and load the object. So I'll come over here to obj load object, hoop2. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to apply dynamics to the low-res version, uh, and we'll use that to drive the, the high-res two-point poly chain that we created. So I'm going to come over to Object, Properties, Dynamics, Cloth, okay? And let's, um, those points that we had the selection set fix right there. We can see them in OpenGL. Those aren't going to be affected by dynamics. We'll come over to the Etc tab, add some gravity. I'm just going to use negative uh, 10. Let's use cotton thick. And let's do calculate. I'm going to change uh, a couple settings. I'm going to change the stretch limit down to 10. Come over to uh, the spring. And I'm just going to make that 100 and see what that looks like. OK, so 
There we go. It relaxes and then it's um, sitting there. Okay, and we get a little bit of a stretch on there. We can adjust the the settings, um, but but we'll take a look at what we have here. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and add collision. So collision detection, and I'm going to set that to all. And let's uh, let's close this down and add a collision object. So I'm just going to add a collision object, and we'll call this ball. This will be our basketball. Uh, and it's uh, kind of big, so I'm going to size this down, something like that, okay? And on frame zero, I'm going to move the ball up here. I'm going to give the net a little bit of time, say frame 30, to, to sit still, create a keyframe, and then on frame 40. I'm just going to move it down through the net. Okay, so we'll, someone will take a shot and through the net. And let's take a look at what's going to happen when we calculate that. So I'm going to go to modify uh, IKB calculate and the ball goes through the net, pulls on it, and then it comes back up and kind of shakes around. Okay, that'll work for me. We can always go and adjust those dynamic settings, but I'm seeing uh, enough that I think it's going to work. Uh, we could add uh, some more spring in, in this, but let's, uh, let's take a look at what it's going to do to our uh, high-res uh, net. So I'm going to select the high-res net, M for motion options, and I'm going to parent it to the low-res net, our, our dynamic object. I'm going to hit P for properties, come over to the deform tab, and under add displacement, I'm going to use metal link. Okay, so I'm going to link the high res object to the dynamic calculation of the low res. And we can already see it in action. Okay, so it's, it's moving our low res net. So what I'm going to do is take that low res net, come over to the render tab, and I'm just going to turn off all the shadows, and I don't want it seen by any rays or the camera or anything. Okay, so that when we do our render, we don't see it, but we see the, the net. Now, from a distance, this two-point polychain could work for us. So, depending on what we're doing, we, we could be done. But I wanted to give it some thickness, and again, we could have, in Modeler, uh, we could have rail extruded um, a flat poly, either just a square or a disc shape, and uh, we would have had our geometry, but I think we can, we can get there. So I'm going to go over to the high-res object, object properties, and under edges, for particle line thickness, I'm going to change that to a negative number. I'm going to go negative, I'm going to try negative three. Okay, now in order for this to work, I need to go to camera properties, and I need to use something other than the classic camera. So I'm going to use the perspective camera. I just wanted to select the camera, go into move and rotate, and then I am in the camera view. So I'm just going to kind of get a, a closer shot here of what we're working with. And now I'm going to do a render. And now my two-point polys actually have thickness and they can uh, be shaded. Uh, so I'm going to go back over to the object properties and I'm going to change this to negative five. And now they're thicker. So I can go in and change on the fly instead of having to go back to modeler and, and, and remodeling it. I can just change this. Let's try negative 10 and see what that looks like little thick. It's a little thick. So I'm just going to go back to like negative six and see what that looks like. Okay, so depending on what, what our net's made out of is uh, is how we can go about working with this. And actually I kind of liked it at negative, around negative four. A um, little thinner. Okay, so there we go. There's our, there's our net. Let's, uh, let's back up and get a quick little look of it being displaced by the the ball by our collision object okay right there this is looking really like a, a net that uh, that's been uh, that's a new net that hasn't really been stretched out enough then it gets pulled back up okay so, I'm driving this animation off that little low-res object. 
Okay. So this is just a quick look at how we can go about modeling the net uh, and how we can use um, line thickness to, to actually give it some depth. Or if we wanted to, it could just be a two-point poly chain in the distance and, and that would work as well. We can, uh, we can also uh, you know, build it out with rail extrude. And then of course using dynamics, using cloth dynamics to uh, animate the net. You could put a bone chain in there, but I think it's much easier to, um, to just use dynamics. It, it's uh, very little work on setup and animation. So again, this is just a quick look at building and animating a net for a basketball goal.